Hello everyone, uh, this is SwartoySnibby here, back with another Star Wars Yoda Republic video. Today I have you guys another Star Wars Yoda Republic video. Today's Star Wars Yoda Republic video, we're just going to be talking about uh, my choices in the War for Arrakath update. So essentially this is just going to be a quick video, sort of like a discussion where I just go over all my decisions that I actually made and what I just decided to do and kind of like the thought process for everything. Instead of making a video where I do the whole story, I thought that this would be better since at the time I wasn't able to, uh, you know, actually record this. But I still wanted to just go ahead and play the story and just see uh, what the deal was. So I hope you guys enjoy this uh, Star Wars Your Republic video. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, uh, then make sure to leave a like. And if you guys want some uh, gaming mints, uh, then check the link in the description down below. Catalyst Gaming Mints. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I'll see you guys in this discussion. Alrighty guys, let's get into this right now. So as you may know, the War for Arrakath is a new update that was introduced with the Star Wars Republic. It continued on the story of the good old, you know, Knights of the Eternal Throne expansion. So if you haven't actually played that, then this will of course, you know, have some spoilers related to that. And also just kind of like continue the story that happened so if you haven't seen my video on Knights of the Eternal Throne, basically at the end I decided to just go ahead and kind of like use uh, the uh, Eternal Throne as like a beacon of hope and uh, just uh, for help uh, for the actual galaxy. Now, you know, some people decide to become like dictators, but I decided, you know, I just wanted to be someone that would just help out with the throne. So w for the most part, uh, with uh, this uh, Wolf of Outcath update, you get to choose a side, whether it's a Republic or the Empire. So I decided to, of course, go with the Republic, because, I mean, I am a Republic character. I know some people might disagree with that or say, you know, oh, maybe the Empire has done better stuff. But once again, I felt like, you know, just going back to, you know, to the Republic was the best option. So, of course, that happened right there. Pretty straightforward. I mean, you had to do all the missions and such, just stopping the Empire and all that different stuff. Of course, we were able to meet uh, the, uh, you know, old uh, trooper companion that I actually started a romance with, and then, of course, you know, just continued that. From what I hear, if you actually messed up and were kind of evil and stuff in the earlier chapters to uh, Knights of the Fallen Empire, I heard that, you know, the person can actually leave you, or rather your companion can leave you. So, I guess it's pretty cool that Bioware is uh, kind of, you know, adjusting to that stuff and just uh, basically saying, you know, hey, if you're going to be evil and just kind of like... Uh, I say kind of like uh, defeat your values that you used to have with your companion and then they're just going to make them disappear. So uh, we do have uh, that uh, right there. And uh, with uh, the story with the War for Iocath, essentially, you know, we're just trying to uh, go to the uh, big uh, super weapon. We do all that regular stuff. We're just uh, stopping the Empire. And then we do have the big decision, or rather, you know, the decision where we learn that there is a traitor that's actually in the Alliance and it's someone close to us. Now, a lot of people pick the option to, you know, just spy on, you know, your team, or rather, you know, your alliance. I decided not to spy on my alliance, I feel like, you know, as the alliance commander, at least with my character, I don't want them kind of, like, uh, you know, spying on my characters, because that defeats the, kind of, like, the whole purpose of, you know, making the Eternal Throne and not being a dictator. So, for this uh, whole entire, I say this whole entire, like, expansion thing, I was uh, basically the uh, good character. I didn't do anything wrong. I know that some people would be like, you know, oh, hey, I'm just going to pick all the evil choices. I know that with Not the Eternal Throne, I just did that occasionally, but I felt like, you know, basically all the light side choices were uh, pretty good options. Now, since this still relates uh, to my choices, I know that after you complete uh, the dailies, you're able to, uh, you know, just kind of like uh, roam around the area, just complete dailies and do all the different stuff. So currently I'm aligned with the, the Republic and for the future expansions or whatever they have, I'm assuming that it's going to kind of like change up depending on, you know, who you picked at the very end of this little story. Since I feel like this is kind of like something that's going to tie up the whole entire game or rather, you know, the story aspect of the game. So I'm assuming that since I picked the Republic, some stuff is going to change up. But I feel like for the most part, depending on what actually happens in the story, I'm probably going to stay with the Republic. I mean, obviously, since I didn't, uh, you know, kind of uh, record uh, just me playing the war for uh, Iocath, I wasn't able to kind of, like, uh, go through my uh, thought process every time I picked a decision. But the way I saw it is, you know, since I'm now the Alliance leader, rather, since I do own the Alliance, I was kind of like, you know, we need to make uh, the character not bad, 
but we don't want them to be you know exactly the uh, perfect light side trooper I just try to pick uh, you know the good options or rather the neutral options I know that some people like to have uh, light side characters but with me personally I was like you know I just need to kind of show that my character can be you know he can make the hard decisions but also at the same time you know he's not exactly you know an evil character I mean, with the system in general, ever since the Knights of the Eternal Throne, you might have seen that, you know, they did have this little light side system, and I'm obviously light 5, but the reason behind that is pretty straightforward, and it's just uh, simply put, is that when they introduced uh, the whole entire, you know, light side, dark side system into the game, I was just like, you know, I just need to kind of like pick one side and keep with it, so that's the reason right there. But, you know, either way, I think that, you know, this is a good expansion. It just shows that, you know, Bioware is trying to improve with uh, the whole entire thing. And stuff just kind of relating it to the expansion. That's good news that they're trying to, you know, just kind of uh, show that they're trying to branch out. And they're just trying to uh, show impacts, uh, you know, the impacts with the story. I know for me, personally, I'm okay with whatever the story is, what the deal with it is. I know that a lot of people play, uh, you know, I say, like, directly for the story. I play mostly for the multiplayer. But I know that some people actually like the story elements, and a lot of people actually did watch my, you know, Knights of the Fallen Empire, I say story in Knights of the Eternal Throne, so I just wanted to kind of, like, uh, put that stuff out there. But, I mean, the afterthoughts, just, you know, thinking about the whole entire expansion, it is good because, I mean, it is a good opener to whatever it comes next. But I'm pretty sure just the deal is with whatever you, or, you know, whatever you picked, or, I say with this expansion, I feel like it's going to have a really, uh, you know, uh, this is probably going to have a big decision or kind of screw some stuff up. So this is like a boss, I'm pretty sure, and this is probably really stupid, I'm going to die like any second now. But, you know, hey, we're okay with that, we're just going to attack uh, the enemy. Oh, this is going to hurt bad, I can already tell. Alright, well, this is interesting. So, I'm attacking this boss, he's not doing much, and it's actually working out pretty good. Is this going to be the next, you know, soloing video where we solo a boss? Uh, I have no idea, find out. But anyways, I mean, that's really all there is to it, guys. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And at least in my opinion, it was a good expansion just to kind of like it show that Bioware is trying to improve the story and do all that cool stuff right there. Real talk, guys. Uh, I know that this isn't even relating to the video, but I'm pretty sure I could actually solo this guy with enough time. That's pretty cool. I guess we will just see a return with, you know, soloing a, a you know, colossal droid or whatever it's called. But yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess, you know, that we're going to be able to just go ahead and just do this now. I guess uh, a lot of people would be like, you know, we can't solo this daily. But we're just going to prove everyone wrong right here. We're just going to solo a daily. Even though we're probably going to completely fail at it, and we're kind of dying to, you know, those little rocket things. But hey, you know, we're okay with that. Never mind, it looks like this boss guy does reset. But either way, I mean, overall, I think it's a pretty cool that we have, you know, a new story. I feel like they can definitely expand on the stuff that's happened. But, I mean, that's all there really is to it when it comes down to this, uh, you know, little update. It wasn't really that long, but I just thought I would share my opinions and views on some of the choices. And overall, just the, the uh, small little discussion on the direction of the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you guys enjoy these videos, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.